Hey everyone, it's Drew from NWA3D, and I'm going to go over how to set up Cura 3.1 for the NWA3D A5. And Cura is a slicing program, and Cura 3.1 is an amazing version of a slicer that works for tons of different types of printers, and you can do lots of really advanced stuff with it. And that's what we're going to talk about today, on how to set it up. So, the first thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to install your printer. So the first time you open up Cura, uh, you'll have a little print screen where you can choose your printer. But if you've already installed it, you can go up here and click Settings, and then Printer, and then you can go to where it says Add Printer to add your printer. And you'll see the same thing that you see when you first open it up. And what we're going to do is we're going to go down here to Custom, and that's what we're going to add. So where it says Custom FDM Printer, we are going to name this right here the NWA 3D A5. Uh, so name of our printer, and then we'll click Add Printer. And then the next thing that we're going to do is we are, need to put in the sizes of our printer so we know how large it is. So to do that, we're going to enter these values into this little box that pops up. So the X of our printer is going to be 125, which is about 5 inches. Our depth is going to be 150, which is, oops, 150, which is about 6 inches. And our Z is going to be 100, and that is about 4 inches. And we're going to make sure that this heated bed is not checked because the A5 does not have a heated bed. And then we'll change this G-code flavor to RepRap. That's the type of uh, operating system that it uses. And then we're going to change this material diameter right here to 1.75. And all these other values we can leave the same for now. And then now we'll go ahead and click Finish. So once you first open it up, you're going to see this is your control screen where you're going to load your models in right here to be able to print with. And over here are all of your settings. Now, you can load a profile by clicking on this profile right here, and then you can go to where it says Manage Profiles, and you can actually import a profile right here. And from your SD card, you can actually import our Cura profile. And you can see right here is where you can actually export it as well. So if you wanted to load that, you can. You could just select where your, your file is. But right now, we're going to go ahead and just set up all the settings without doing that. So we're going to go ahead and click Close. And first, we're going to make sure that this material is set to PLA. And then we're going to make sure that down here on this layer height, we're going to go ahead and change this to 0 0.2. So 0 0.1 is the best that it can do, but we're going to do medium quality. So we're going to go ahead and change this to 0 0.2. So that's medium. 0 0.3 is the lowest quality, which means it's going to print the fastest. Uh, and then with the shell thickness, we're going to go ahead and leave both the shell thickness and the top and bottom at 0 0.8. And that's a multi profile nozzle size, which is 0 0.4, so that's perfect. And that's two shells, which will make a strong model. Uh, the infill, we'll leave that the same too. And infill is the what's filled inside of the model. And you can see the little boxes that, that pop up when you scroll over them. And you can see each one of those... Uh, between 5 and 20% is normally what we recommend. But if you wanted to go hollow, you could be 0, and 100% would obviously be completely solid. Now the printing temperature, we are going to change this number, and we're going to change it to 220 for our high-quality PLA that we use. We want to make sure that 220 is going to be able to melt it and to have really successful prints, so that's what we're going to set that at. And our diameter we already set, so we'll leave that, and our flow we'll leave that the same. And our print speed, though, we're going to change that to 50 because we want to make sure that it doesn't go faster than 50 millimeters a second, because if it does, the layers might not stick together, and it, it'll cause more problems. And that's with any 3D printer. Even though this 3D printer can print a lot faster than that, we always recommend printing at a max speed of 50. And the travel speed, we'll go ahead and leave that the same, but this initial layer speed, we're going to change. But you don't see that right now, because this is activated as an advanced setting. And the way that you find the advanced settings is by scrolling over each one of these, you can see the little gear that pops up. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll over this and click on that gear, and here are all of the awesome advanced settings that Cura adds. And this is why we love Cura so much, because you can add all of these and make all of these different things visible. But right now, we only need to see the initial layer speed. So that's why I clicked on this right here to make this visible, because that's the only other one that we need to change. So we'll go ahead and click Close. And then we're going to change this setting from the default 25 to 15. And then when we scroll down here a little bit, we'll see that we have this uh, print cooling will leave checked, and then generate support. If our model needs supports, we would check right there. So we'll go ahead and check it. Why not? And then if it ever needs supports, it will automatically generate them either everywhere or by clicking on this one, places that are just touching the build plate. So everywhere would be inside of your model if it needed supports that were inside of it. Um, and everywhere, or touching build plate would just be on the outside of your model. And then build plate adhesion, brim, will work as suction cups to help things to stick. It's literally lines around the outside of your model to help things to be able to stick to the, to the platform. But we're going to go ahead and change this to skirt. And that is a line that will go around the outside of your model, and it will make sure that the pressure is built up inside of there um, for the filament to feed out, make sure all the filament's feeding out right, and to also show you that the build plate is level or not. 
And those are the only values that we're going to change. So now that we have all these set, we're going to go ahead and save these. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this. And this is going to save as a profile just like you would load your NWA5 printer profile that's found on your SD cards. But we're going to go ahead and click Create Profile from Current Settings. And we're going to go ahead and call this one PLA. And how about medium? So now we have this saved as PLA medium, so we know that these are our medium settings that we can change. And you can hit close right here. And then now if I ever wanted to maybe make one that was high quality or if I want to make one that's really fast, I could change each one of these. Or maybe if I wanted to have one that was for flexible TPU, if I had an upgraded uh, extruder, or maybe if you have an upgraded nozzle, you could print in PLA carbon fiber or something like that. You can have each one of these profiles to be different. And you just have to make sure that your materials and profile line up. So now that we have those set, we're ready to actually load a model inside of Cura. And that's done by clicking Open File right here. And then when we click Open File, then we can navigate to our SD cards. And we can open up each one of our files. So on the SD cards, we're going to go ahead and go to our STL file folder. And then we'll click on Keychain, for instance. And then now I'm going to go ahead and load this keychain. And then now that I have this keychain, you can right click and you can move it around to rotate it and kind of change your view. And as long as it's yellow in here, it's ready to print. And you can see this right here, this slice right here, when this slices, that means it is done. And it says it's going to take 21 minutes. And you can even change the name of it right here. So when you uh, save it to your SD card, and then when you select it on your printer, it'll be named whatever you want. So let's go ahead and name this keychain and press return. And then I can also click on this, and I can move it around. I could even add more than one model if I wanted to. So I could even click Open File. Let's go ahead and add another keychain. It, it doesn't have to be the same thing. It could be anything, but I'm going to add that, another one. And as long as it's inside of here and it doesn't have these lines that are going through it that's gray, it will print. But if it looks like that, that means that it's outside of the build area. So you have to have it inside of the build area for it to be able to print. You can also change the scale. So if you're not worried about the scale of your model, you can drag these boxes and make it larger. Or you can change these values here. But but again, be really mindful that it doesn't turn with the, those gray and yellow stripes. So I can go ahead and turn this up about just 150% larger. There we go. Now it's turned yellow, so now we know it'll work. You can also rotate models right here because print orientation is also very important. So when I, if I right-click here and kind of change my view a little, you can see that this is flat, which is going to print really well. But let's say that it was standing up like this. Like maybe when you designed it, it was kind of standing up at an angle. And if you have it standing up on an angle, that's when it's going to automatically generate supports for it and get those different supports ready. You can see where it's slicing right here. And you can see those supports by clicking the solid view and then going to layer view. And then now you can see what each individual support is going to do. And you can even scroll down and see what each layer is going to do. So you can see the red is the outside part of our model right there. And then that bluish turquoise right there, that is the support structure. But we don't really need supports with this. So if I click on this, the supports are just going to waste materials. So I'm going to go ahead and go over here and click reset. And then I'll flatten it back down because we don't need to have supports. And then now, when it gets unslicing, we'll be ready to save it. So if you have your SD card plugged into your computer, then it'll say save to SD right here. And this save to file, that'll just let you save it wherever you have it on your computer. But if I put my SD card in, it'll pop up right here where it actually says save to removable drive. So uh, when it says save to removable drive, you just click that, and it'll exactly save it to there with named whatever that you've named it right here. And then I can click eject. And I can take that SD card and put that in our uh, NWA 3D A5. And then from the control screen, I'll go to uh, print and then I'll select my model. So I hope you guys enjoy this video and good luck setting up your 3D printer and have fun 3D printing.